Mel Herdig's new book, The Truth About Canada, features some important, some astonishing, and some truly appalling things all Canadians should know about our country. What happens in Canada is interesting. We have the greatest concentration of ownership of the media in any major Western democracy by far. Not only is it a concentration of ownership of the media, but it is a cross-ownership as well, where in many markets, the same people own the television stations and own the newspapers as well, which is something that would not be allowed in most other Western democracies. So you get a situation like New Brunswick, or Saskatchewan, or Vancouver, British Columbia, where you essentially get one voice and only one voice. And the people who own most of these newspapers and the most of these television stations are not only conservative and not only far right wing, but they're falling off the right edge of the globe. They're very, very conservative people. So a Conrad Black or an Izzy Asper goes out and hires a very, very conservative newspaper publisher and the very conservative newspaper publisher then goes out and hires a very conservative newspaper editor. And the very conservative newspaper editor then goes out and hires very conservative newspaper columnists. So you tend to get a steady stream of stuff that doesn't reflect the opinion of average Canadians. One of the interesting things I've found over the years, uh, the the National Post slash Financial Post publishes polls uh, about every couple of weeks on the uh, views of leading chief executive officers in Canada, and they ask some questions. What do you think of this? What do you think about that? And consistently, as sure as we're here in this room together tonight, consistently, the opinions of the CEOs are incredibly different than the opinions of the majority of Canadians. I'll just give you one recent example. Uh, what, uh, would you, what, what would you like to cut government spending? Which area would you like to cut government spending by most of all? And uh, the, the CEOs said, social spending. And uh, the average Canadian says, well, we, we really need to increase our social spending in Canada, which is true, and I'll give you some stats on that in a moment. So you would get reflected in our media the views of the Neanderthals at the Fraser Institute or the C.D. Howe Institute or the terribly awful Canadian Council of Chief Executives. The Neanderthal Institute of Canada is a clearinghouse for American administration approved dysfunctional social policies such as too much spending on the environment, health care, education, social programs, and so on. And, of course, too much taxation. According to founder Michael Walker, the Institute is devoted to researching the use of markets, how markets work, how markets fail. The C.D. Howe Institute is funded almost exclusively from Bay Street. The Canadian Council of Chief Executives is almost certainly the most continentalist corporate organization in modern Canadian history. Reporters, <coughs> columnists, they get handed the stuff from the C.D. Howe Institute, from the Fraser Institute, from the Canadian Council of Chief Executives, from the ridiculous Conference Board of Canada, and the next day it's on the front page of the paper. Or if it's not on the front page of the paper, it's on the front page of the business section of the paper. Conversely, if you, if they get, the reporters get material from the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives, or the Canadian Social Welfare Council, or etc., all was preceded by the left lean, leaning. They don't say, the Fraser Institute is falling off the right edge of the globe and things like that, but the others are all left-leaning. Uh, their stuff is either not published 
or some of it is published, or a couple paragraphs will appear next to the comic book section of the newspapers. So Canadians are misled almost every day on a daily basis in the stuff that they read. And I put together this book after three and a half years of research with the view in mind to say, hey, you know, this isn't really what is happening in our country. I want to say a few words about foreign investment. Of all the money that the new agency, Investment Canada, monitors for all this foreign direct investment that's come in since FIRA was abolished, $847 billion to the end of March of this year, crummy 2.4% was for new business investment. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't see how we can be a country uh, and keep selling off our high-tech companies in, in and around Ottawa or in and around the Fraser Valley or across the country and our natural resources, <clears throat> excuse me, our oil and gas companies, our manufacturing sector, our manufacturing sector in Canada is now majority foreign-owned, our oil and gas sector is now majority foreign-owned, and we've got 36 different sectors of the Canadian economy that are majority foreign-owned and controlled. Uh, anybody want to take a guess as to how many there are in the United States? Zero. Zero. There isn't a single sector in the United States economy that is majority foreign-owned and controlled. The chart says it all. Canada has more of its manufacturing industry under foreign control than any other OECD country. In the book you'll see uh, leading editorials in the Globe and Mail and etc. saying the free trade agreement is the basis of our uh, wealth and the, our, our economy. And other quotes saying the free trade agreement was instrumental in raising our standard of living, etc. What I did, John. Mel is referring to the right honorable John Turner, Prime Minister of Canada in 1984, who, as leader of the opposition in 1988, gave a truly inspired, impassioned speech on behalf of our country. Here is an excerpt from that speech. Mr. Speaker, we are here today to discuss one of the most devastating pieces of legislation ever brought before the House of Commons, a bill which will finish Canada as we know it. It is a dream come true for the Americans. At long last, they found a government in Ottawa dumb enough, stupid enough, patsies so craven in the face of American demands that they just caved in to every request made of them. I say to the people of Canada, this is not a trade deal. This is the Sale of Canada Act. Nobody knows who paid for these meetings. Nobody knows who sponsored them. And they're being held in secret. Well, I sent these details of these meetings out to the press. I sent it out to Global Television and to the CBC television, and to CD, CTV television. I sent it out to the Globe and Mail. I sent it out to the National Post. I sent it out to the CanWest newspapers. They weren't interested. Meetings to integrate Canada into the United States with so many famous people attending, they were not interested in the story. Now, what does that tell you about, about the media in this country? There is more information about media ownership, the radical right, foreign ownership, free trade, and the security and prosperity partnership in Mel's book. The truth about Canada includes extensive information about many other issues, including health care, education, social programs, a critique of government operations, immigration, peacekeeping, foreign aid, and much more.